Hello, grade seven students. I hope that you're doing great. We're going to continue talking about ways animals use to recognize their food. Last time we said that animals use their senses and their sensory organs to recognize their food. Senses are in number of five. We have the hearing sense, seeing sense, smelling sense, tasting sense, and touching sense. These senses are allowed by sensory organs, which are the ears, eyes, nose, tongue, and skin. In order to recognize their food, and for sure this differs from one animal to another, animals use different organs and senses as we saw in document one. In document two, we talked about ways grasshoppers recognize their food, and we conclude that at the end, grasshoppers use their smelling sense, their seeing sense, and they also use their pulps for tasting. Today, we're going to work on application one, page 20. So please get your copy books and let's start. Application one, how does a platypus find its food? This is the platypus and it is a mammal. The duck-built platypus is a mammal that lives in lakes and rivers. It dives underwater and scans the bottom, searching for any shrimps or any other crustacean animals. But how does the platypus find and recognize its prey? To solve this problem, we conducted the following experiment. So we're doing this experiment to solve a problem. We have an aim, we have an objective. What is the objective? It is to solve the problem. Taib, what is the problem? How does the platypus find and recognize its prey? Okay, if the question was pick out the pose the problem, you can simply pick out the question and copy it. Okay, but here they are asking us to tell the objective of the research. What are we trying, trying to find out or know? We're trying to know or to find out how a platypus finds and recognize its phrase. Okay, so this is the objective. Another word for objective is aim or purpose. So when I ask you about the objective on an experiment, the aim of an experiment, the purpose of an experiment, okay, they point to the same question. What are we trying to do in this experiment? Why are we conducting this experiment? So in order to find out how a platypus finds and recognizes its food. So how a platypus finds and recognizes its prey. Classify platypus according to its food diet. Classify, we have to justify our answer. What does a platypus eat? A platypus feeds on shrimps and other crustacean animals. So it feeds on animals. So what is its type according to its food diet? It is a carnivore. And we need to justify. So we will say it is a carnivore since it feeds on food of animal origin such as shrimps and crustacean animals. Classify, we need to justify our answer. Verify whether platypus uses its eyes to detect its prey. Let's first read the experiments done. We did four different experiments. In the first one, we closed the eyes of the platypus. The platypus can still detect its prey, even if its eyes are closed. What does this mean? In the second experiment, we close the ears of the platypus. Come in, the platypus can still detect the prey, even if its ears are closed. In experiment four, we close the nostrils, the nose of the platypus. The platypus 
can still detect its prey even if its nose is closed. What does this mean? However, when we close the electroreceptor cells, so the platypus has electroreceptor cells right here. When we close them, they are found on the left side of the platypus bill, of the platypus mouth, let's say. The platypus does not detect the prey. So the only way that the platypus cannot anymore detect its prey is by closing its electroreceptor cells found next to its bill. Okay? Hello, in question number three, verify, Yannick, man, we have to justify. When there is an experiment and we want to justify something, the best way to justify is to analyze. So I will add it as a note up. The best way in an experiment, or even if we have a graph, the best way to justify is to analyze. Sometimes you can also compare the experiment or the document. Okay? Verify whether platypus uses its eyes to detect its prey. When we close the eyes of the platypus, the platypus can still detect its prey. This means that eyes have nothing to do with the platypus detecting its prey. The platypus can still find the prey even if it cannot see them. So the platypus does not use its eyes to detect its prey. Okay? Now, to justify, I'm going to analyze. What do I mean by analyze? Yani, say what you did in, in, in the experiment and what were the results. I will say, after closing the eyes of the platypus, the platypus can still detect its prey. Okay, I will add here in experiment one. After closing the eyes of the platypus, the platypus can still detect the prey. So the platypus does not use its eyes to find its prey or food as you want. Okay? Yalla, part four. Analyze experiment two. Analyze experiment two. Derive a suitable conclusion. We're going to analyze experiment two. What do I mean by? What do we mean by analyze? Yani, tell me what you did in the experiment. Do not forget to mention the variable factor. Here it is closing the ears in experiment two. What come in the results? Yeah. In experiment two. The platypus can, or the platypus, detects its prey after closing its ears. You can write it in another way. After closing the ears of the platypus, the platypus detects its prey. Okay? You can switch results and procedure. Now, what is the conclusion? Taib, the platypus, now we closed its ears. Thus, it can still detect its prey. Yani, the ears has nothing have nothing to do with finding the prey. They do nothing for the platypus in the process of detecting a prey. It's a conclusion, so we're going to say we conclude that, or I conclude that, the platypus does not use its ears to detect its okay it is a conclusion so it is very important you start the sentence 
with we conclude that as this is a conclusion. Okay, so right here, the platypus does not use its eyes to detect its prey. It does not use the ears to detect its prey. Let's move to part five. Platypus uses its nostrils to detect its prey. So now we're going talking about experiment four. In experiment four, we close the nostrils of the platypus. Right. Platypus uses its nostrils to detect its prey. Is this statement true? Yes or no? And then we have to explain using the experiments. Taib, in experiment four, we closed the nose, the nostrils of the platypus. The platypus can still detect the prey. Yani, the nose has nothing to do with finding the prey. The platypus can still find the prey even if we close its nostrils. So is the statement correct? Does a platypus use its Nostrils? No. Since? Remember, we are explaining, we are justifying. So the best way to do that is to rely on the given of the, on the experiment and to analyze the given. Since after closing the nostrils, the platypus, The platypus can still detect its prey. Therefore, yani, so the platypus command does not use its nostrils to detect its prey. Okay? So also the platypus does not use the nostrils. We used experiments one, two, and four. Let's move now to the next question. Question number six, asking us to specify, specify, Yani, you answer, then you justify, the sense organ used by the platypus to detect its prey. I'm going to experiment three, so after closing the electroreceptor cells on the left side of the platypus bill, the platypus doesn't detect the prey. The only way in which the platypus is unable to find its prey is when we close its electroreceptor cells. This means that the electroreceptor cells were helping the platypus to find its prey. If we close these cells, the platypus cannot do that anymore. It cannot find its food. So the sense organ used to by the platypus to detect its prey is the electroreceptor cells. Yes. So the electroreceptor cells. I'm going to justify, so I'm going to analyze the experiment we did to find out that the platypus uses its electroreceptor cells. The electroreceptor cells, because when we close the electroreceptor cells found on the left side of the platypus bill, the platypus does not detect Okay, the electroreceptor cells, because when we close the electroreceptor cells found on the left side of the platypus bill, the platypus was unable, he could not detect its prey. Okay? So the electroreceptor cells, since when we close the electroreceptor cells of the platypus, he couldn't, it couldn't detect its prey. Okay? Specify, we start with the answer. So I gave the answer, electroreceptor cell. Answer, then justify. You answer, then you justify your answer. 
And I'm talking here about specify. Okay, now the second part of this question. More observations are done to identify the factor that attracts the platypus toward its prey. Fine. To identify the factor that attracts the platypus toward its prey, this is the aim of the experiment. They didn't ask us to, to write the aim, but I'm telling you, if they did so, this is the aim of the experiment. Why are we doing this experiment? I told you aim. Objective. Come in. Purpose. So we did other observations too find out the factor that attracts the platypus to the prey. Yeah, and what does the prey do to attract uh, the platypus? The variable was, I mean, two observations, A and B. The, if the prey remains in its place, the platypus keeps swimming. But if the prey moves quickly, the platypus approaches its bill to the mud, then snaps up it. Yeah. If the prey is immobile, it's not moving, the platypus keeps swimming and does not find it. Mm -hmm. But if the prey moves quickly, then the platypus finds it. Show that the movement of the prey is the factor that attracts the platypus. Show, yani we have to justify. We have to show in the movement of the prey. When the prey moves, this attracts the platypus. We're going to say, Innu. I'm going to use the experiments and I'm going to analyze both, ex both experiments. Hmm. When the prey remains in its a place, the platypus keeps swimming. I will use while, so I'm now anal analyzing two experiments. While, when the prey moves, lemma the prey moves, the platypus finds it. But is that it doesn't move, the platypus keeps swimming and does not find it. So while, when the prey moves quickly, the platypus approaches its bill to the mud and snaps it up. This, so therefore, the movement of the prey is the factor that attracts the platypus. How does the platypus find its prey? It is when the prey uh, moves, okay? Here they are asking us to show that type. We did two different observations, two different, uh, let's say, experiments. We noticed that if the prey remains in place and doesn't move, the platypus can, cannot find it. But if it moves, the platypus finds it and consume it, consumes it, okay? So the movement of the prey is the factor that attracts the platypus. Pick out the tool used by the platypus to catch the prey. What does the platypus use to catch its prey? The platypus approaches its bill to snaps it up. So the capturing tool here, right here, is the bill of the platypus type. What is a capturing tool? Add this as a note under this question. So this is a note. What is a capturing tool? Here, masalan, the bill is the capturing tool of um, uh, the platypus. What is a capturing tool? A capturing tool, capturing tool, 
is the tool used by an animal to capture its food. Okay, and in our case right here, it was the bill of the platypus. This is all for today. Thank you for listening.